you expected to end up with over one and a quarter million, but in fact, you ended up with less than a quarter of a million dollars, more than a million dollars less than what they said you were gonna end up with, right? So if you just take into account a one and a half percent managed money fee over that same period of time with this investment, you're talking about the fact that you'd only end up with $64,458. So that is over, <laughs> over $1.2 million less than you thought you were gonna have. Hey, what's going on, Cashflow Hackers? It's Chris with Life 180, and for this video, I'm coming to you with video number two of the three lies that Wall Street is telling you when it comes to your money. And so lie number two, last, last lie we talked about, and go back and watch it if you haven't seen it already, and I'll put a link about it above, and then you can come right back to this one, but I, I totally think you should watch these in order. The last video that we talked about was uh, the concept about talking about tax deductions and the fact that most people that think they're getting a tax deduction actually aren't. So this one, what I'm gonna get into with you is the concept of the average rate of return. Now, this is the reason I'm so passionate about this. If you look at the history of what people are taught, they're taught to buy and hold, they're taught that the S&P 500 since 1925 does about an average of 8.3%. So conservatively speaking, you can bank on getting an 8% rate of return over the, long, uh, over the long haul. And the idea there is saying, well, that's fine. The market's gonna go up, it's gonna come down. But the bottom line is that if you just buy and hold and keep investing, keep doing your thing, it's gonna work out. Now, um, I'm here to tell you that math actually matters and I wanna show you how it all works out and, and, and talk to you about how why the average rate of return and banking on the average rate of return is actually a lie that they've gotten you to buy into and how by simply buying into this concept of buying and holding and banking on this average rate of return, it's actually gonna make you broke and it's what I believe is making a huge portion of America and Canada, North Americans, broke in general, if not the rest of the world. Um, so what I wanna do here is I wanna actually go to my, go to my iPad right here and I wanna, I wanna run a little math equation for you, right? So let me get to the right color here. So what I wanna do is run this little math equation for you. Um, and uh, so here we go. Let's go like that. So if, let, let's run a, a simple equation. If let's, let's say you had $1,000, okay? So this is year one, okay? Let's just say it's year one. You had $1,000 in an account. Now, if that, if that account performed at a negative 50%, let's just say it went down by 50%, how much money do you have left? You're right, you have, you have 500 bucks, right? So it's obviously a bad year, but market, and obviously I'm using an extreme example right here, right? Market proponents, people that love the market, advisors, money managers, so on and so forth would say, just, just buy and hold, just hold on. Now, I'm also, I am a big believer that you should never liquidate a negatively performing asset because that just compounds a problem. However, in this scenario, when we're just talking about math, we're talking year one, you end year one with 500 bucks. So year two, you start with 500 bucks, right? That's what you start with. So let's just say the market goes up 100%, goes plus 100%. What are, you, what are you at right now? You have now you're back to the $1,000 in your account, right? So that, that seems really good. Now, common sense would say, well, what was your average rate of return between year one and year two, right? Most people would look at these and say, well, I started with 1,000, I ended with 1,000, so therefore my average rate of return is 0%, right? But in fact, that is not the case. That is actually your real return real ROR is 0%. And the average rate of return is something entirely different. And here's how you come to it. So here's what you did. You had a negative, uh, you, while you ended up at $1,000 still, and so your real return, real return is zero, you look at this, you had a plus 100 year, right? Plus 100%, then a negative 50%, right? So what is that? You, you 100 minus 50 is 50, right? So, and then you divide that by two years equals 25% is your average. See, this is, this, is, this is why banking on the average rate of return has nothing to do with your actual results. Now, I wanna take this a step further and I actually wanna show you uh, an image that I think is really important for you to understand. So, so now you'll see that I was talking about the 
at not banking on the average rate of return. Now, the example that I just gave you was using extremes of like a plus 50%, a negative, uh, actually a negative 50, a plus 100. Those are obviously using big numbers to, to show a principle and a concept. But what this does, what this image shows you on my iPad right here is it shows you the history. So what it does is it goes back to the beginning of the S&P 500 and it says, if you were to invest $1,000 in 1925, and you were to say, listen, and you were to follow people's advice and say, listen, the market is gonna average 8.3%. I went, I hopped in a time machine, I went to the future, I know what that future holds, and the stock market is gonna be this, right? And so I know, I, I see everything that's going on. I know, I, I, I saw this spreadsheet that said the market is gonna average 8.3%, and guess what, I, you can do this. Now, mind you, I did this, you can see 2013 is the last year. This is something I put together in 2014 pulling it out of the archives because I think it's really valuable. I just wanted to share it again. But here's the big deal with this. I, I, I said, I saw a, a, a spreadsheet said the market's gonna average 8.3%. So guess what? I ran a spreadsheet here and it's off to the moon. You could invest this million dollars and for, or a thousand dollars and for the next generation, you're gonna end up with $1,268,646.65. That's what you're gonna end up with, right? So. This is the problem. When people's expectations are out of alignment with reality of what really happens mathematically with financial planning, not understanding all the moving parts of it, you get into trouble, right? And so here's the deal. You can see now what I, ha what I did was I broke it down and that gray column in the back shows the, the commonly used false estimate based on the average rate of return. And this is what mutual fund perspectives do. This is what money managers do. They talk about this average rate of return when it has nothing to do. In fact, I think it should be illegal to even talk about average rate of return, we need to be talking about real rates of return based on actual reality, right? Like, so it's, 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 it's mind blowing to me. So, but what we do is we talk about um, the actual performance here. So now you can see the blue here is talking about actual performance with no fees. Now this is no fees involved. This is just saying, even though we're talking 8.3 is still the average, nothing changed because the average is there, but it's just about how they present it to you and what your expectations are for your account performance. And even with an 8.3 average, with the real rate of return being reduced because of losses in certain years and, and the fact that average, because of what I showed you, has nothing to do with anything, you expected to end up with over a one and a quarter million, but in fact, you ended up with less than a quarter of a million dollars, more than a million dollars less than what they said you were going to end up with, right? So if, if you if you can see that, it is it is a really, really powerful thing to understand, is just that concept. But here's what makes it worse. When we come into the concept of now on top of those losses and on top of taking into real rates of return and market performance, and then you tap onto that fact that money managers, one of the, the one of the great, and this isn't one of the lies in the in the in in this series, but the concept of managed money fees, which everything is transitioning to managed money, which I get, I understand why the industry is doing it because they're annuitizing their business. They're making it so if they can get you as a client, they're gonna make more money than you will over a long period of time and they don't take the risk, right? Like, so that's what they're doing. And this goes to show you, check this out, because of fees, so if you just take into account a 1.5% managed money fee over that same period of time with this investment, you're talking about the fact that you'd only end up with $64,458. So that is over, uh, over $1.2 million less than you thought you were gonna have, right? And so this is the problem. It's not that investing is bad, it's, it's that expectations uh, and not understanding all the moving parts of investing are bad. And, and a lot of the times when people are compa comparing investments to saving vehicles, right? They say, well, why would I put money in a certain product that's only getting 4% or 4.5% when I could put money over here and, and get an average rate of return of seven or eight? Well, here's why. This is exactly why. Because when you understand that average rate of return has nothing to do and has no implication on what you're actually getting for real returns long-term in your account, that's what you have to really take into consideration. So. I hope this makes sense, you know, like, because, you know, this, this, this right here, and I'm going to pick it up and show it like this right here is one of the most important things that you can understand when it comes to your money. It's one of the most important things that people are being lied to about. And I think, 
uh, it's, it's something everybody should understand. So if you have any questions about this at all, please comment in the, in the section below, in the comment section below. I will do my best to help you out. Uh, if, you, if you have any uh, investments that you're struggling with or you know anything, reach out to one of our advisors. They can help kind of show you some alternatives uh, you know, to what exists out there, where you can put your money, where you can keep it safe, where you can actually have real rates of return uh, that are better. And, and I guess um, that's it. If you haven't already, please click uh, the subscription button, subscribe, hit the bell that way you get notified every time I launch a new video, because you know what? This is the second video of this series. Go back and watch the next one. If you wanna get notified on the next video that's coming out, talking about the three lies that Wall Street's telling you about your money, you need to make sure you're subscribed. That way you get notified on your cell phone. Make sure you click that bell. That way it happens. And if you found value in this, please share it with people. Like I, I think I'm trying to get this good foundational financial education out there to the world. If you could share this with, me, with other people, I would just be honored uh, for you to play that part and to help me out because um, I think this stuff, I'm a geek about this stuff, but I think it's really important. So anyway, I hope that's it. I'll see you on the next video. Have a blessed, inspirational day. Take care.